It's like you're letting you go in and bless someone. He doesn't go where he's not invited. God doesn't use his way. God does not just uh, out of, I, I pray that you will understand this. He never misses his way. When they came to Abraham's home in Genesis 18, don't go there. The Bible says Abraham very quickly told them, please don't go. Stay here that I may go and prepare something. Don't go. Don't, it, because, it, because God has to be sustained in a place. When you see God somewhere, a man has decided to tie him there. That's why Jacob said, and I will not let you go. In other words, how long God will stay is determined by the man that is tying God in that place. Get all this religion. One day, one day, the Lord will come. One day, just wait, your time will come. And when the time is right, is this time wrong? <laughs> no, talk to me. I talk to you that when, when a man who knows God is talking, is different. So which one day is this? That one day the Lord will come on the horse and just wait. And God is getting ready. And the keyboard man is playing it. And the Lord is getting ready. And one day, my sister, I feel it. I feel it. For how long will you feel? We are not called to feel God. We are called to demonstrate God. So it's not a God of one day. One day is your day. And when the, what was it? But they command you that when the time is right, I the Lord. Is this time, this time wrong? It's not wrong. It's not wrong, sir. I, <laughs> I grew up elderly men of God and I was carrying a Bible for one of them and that was terribly different in signs and wonders and we went to a meeting and the first few days there were little little manifestations of God uh, demons living and all that now, now the pastors focus a lot on that uh, that that is the sign of the presence of God no that is the sign that you are a believer those are not things we should focus on to draw attention those are signs of a believer. Now, those are because I'm not seeing God in this place. I forgot to carry my jacket. Somebody should give me my coat. Somebody around here. I want to go to that mountain and bring God here. That is how people who know God talk. They don't cry in the meeting and say, The Lord, Father, now see, as your servant is going to pray. And so I came and I gave him water and he took his Bible and put it beside and he 
he faced the wall, he stayed like that for some time. Then he called me at around three, that was in the morning. And he said, come, tell them to give you the program of the service. I don't know who's giving the service. So I came and told him, and he told us at exactly 8.15 in the night, let them be doing everything, with everything they, are doing. they are doing. Because because I'm coming to show you people what God showed me on the mountain. So he went back to sleep. So the people preached and preached and said, in the name of Jesus, he said, Sir, I don't know, change of voice is not the arrival of God. You understand what I'm saying? What you are saying, uh, pastors, I'm sorry, please. <laughs> so he, he, you know, the challenge is one, if you have met a man who knows God, and if you know God, you'll have a problem with so many things church people do. So he slept again and at, at exactly around 8, I was around the corner because I knew he'll call. So he called and I came in. And nobody carries his Bible. He's an elderly man, bald-headed. So he carried his Bible and he was coming into the meeting. When he arrives, every program should be settled, nobody talking. Because he has arrived. And when he came, he went straight and took the microphone. He didn't preach for 15 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, I was there. An old man was still waiting on his cows in the nearby home. It is that old man that shouted, what is happening in this home? Because the trees in my compound are moving. The cows are moving. My house is moving. Someone should hold me. There is, I, I am going. I am going. I am going. Everything is going. Everything is moving. That is the first meeting I saw because of the crowd. Uh, please just disconnect that and focus on me. Stop it and just look at me. Right? I don't want you this to you miss out on it and then tomorrow you say, Hey man of God, I wanted you to pray. So just stop that. Leave that to media people. Look at me. Because I know by the grace of God that I have something. Amen. Yes, I know. When you have it, you know it. Peter said, the gold and the silver I do not have. But what I have. In other words, you are crippled because I have what can raise you. I have it. I have it. When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. So we don't pray for gifts. You don't understand this. Natasha. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 1 verse 11. Put it there. Let me come down. I intend to use 45 minutes. In respect and honor to the men of God gathered here. But I can't help myself when I know I have something. I looked at a billionaire one time and I told him, sir, be careful how you call my name. I can change your life. He said, hey. Hey. Ha! Yes. <laughs> Sounds like pride. It's not pride. Yes. That's why Elisha told the king, don't tear your clothes. Send the man to me. He didn't say send him to church. He didn't say call prayer warriors to pray. It is people who don't know God that pray over matters. Yes. Elisha did not say let's pray for the economic situation. Elisha said tomorrow yes. at this time Elijah said if I be a man of God. He didn't pray. Peter said the gold and the silver I don't have but what I have, I give to you. Yes. Elijah told Elisha, what would you want me to do for you before I am taken? He didn't say, what would you want the Lord to do for you? Yeah. Stop bringing God in things that don't concern God. Wacha kupatia mungu jukumu mungu hana. And Elisha was also smart, he said, my Lord, that a double portion, he didn't say of the spirit of God, of your spirit, may be on me. And what did Elijah tell him? You have asked for a hard thing. Nevertheless, not when you see God, when you see me. For remove God out of this. When you see me, <laughs> when I'm being taken from you, then it will happen. But if you miss your focus on me, not even God can help you. 
Now listen to this. The Shunammite woman that was cooking for Elisha and was behaving like he knows Elisha, but she didn't really know Elisha. Elisha one day, because Elisha was looking at, at her stupidity and confusion, she invited Elisha, then she couldn't entertain what she invited. Because not every gift you desire, you invite. Pastors, you can invite a grace and a pastor from another church will come and collect it. And you, the host, will remain the way you are. Jesus told Simon, Simon, I came to your house. No water for my feet. No oil for my feet. A woman that did not invite me came in and did what you should have done. All you are left with are pictures you took that Jesus came to your ministry. But the blessing is gone with the woman who knew the value of what you invited. Simon! Listen. Listen to me very well. My dear ministers of God. <laughs> so the woman invited this man of God and she kept giving him cabbages and, uh, and rice and cabbages. Elisha would come and eat rice and cabbages and then go. He didn't say anything. Because God does not speak over stupid offerings. He didn't say anything. God doesn't accept everything. God has a class of his own. That's why in Malachi he says, if I'm a father, where is my honor? I'm not asking for offering. I'm asking for honor. Where is my honor? And then he said, I've looked at the altar and I'm seeing lame offerings. I'm seeing useless blind seeds. He said, give it to the governor we see. God said, I have seen men honor governors more than they honor God. And then he said, if, if, if your governor will take that, give it to your governor. Sir, God is in his realm. Yes. You can't compromise him. So Elisha walked in there and ate the rice and the cabbages and he said nothing. And he walked away. And he came in again and he ate the rice and the cabbages and he walked out and he said nothing. Then the woman said this, and this is very important. The woman said to the husband, my Lord, I now perceive, which means the reason I was giving him rice and cabbages, I really didn't know who this man is. My treatment was revelation of his person. I didn't know him, so I treated him like that. And as long as I treated him in a manner that he doesn't deserve, according to the grace on his life, he didn't say anything. When you give offerings, you have to follow up with messages of Papa. Did you see it? Papa, have you seen it? Papa, did you receive it? The question is when you sent it, which name did it reflect? When the prophetic is quiet, it's not because God is wicked. It's because your standard is shameful. And God doesn't know how to relate with that. You don't feed God with cabbages. Cabbages didn't bring God to your house. Listen to this. Ah! So Elijah ate one thing with men who carry God, Bishop, is several times they look like they are very proud. Because God is proud. That is the number one nature of God. He says, I am God and besides me, there is none. I am the only one. I'm in a class of my own. Man introduced him, but when the time came for him to introduce himself, he said, I am God. And besides me, there is no other. God brags. He said, he said, there is no other. Look at him demanding honor in Malachi. He says, where is my honor? Where is my honor? That was God talking. He brags. He's in a class of his own. He's in a dimension and a realm of his own and he's incomparable that is God and I've noted this with every man who carries an unusual grace if you don't understand them very well you'll think they are proud because that's the nature of God the way God talks look at Jesus somebody comes to him and say run out of town Herod wants to kill you and then he say go and tell that fox you know where fox is a fox is a wild dog he called the president a dog go and tell that dog I'm preaching today and tomorrow, the third day, I shall be perfected. He can do nothing about it. 
the king threatened him he gave the king his itinerary he said there Herod he was arrested when Pilate looked at him and said you know I have the power to release you and the power to, to, to bind you he said I was quiet until you touched what you don't know you talked about power you don't know power Herod, uh, Pilate you have no power at all over me I have power to lay down my life and pick it up again. Look, he's arrested. You think he was some timid preacher that would say, Peter, Peter, let's go and pray. Peter, they are coming. Mm -mm. <laughs> Jesus was bold. Jesus was firm. Jesus was assertive. You couldn't control him and you couldn't manipulate him. He spoke like a man who knew who he was. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. I'm the bread which came down from heaven. Because that is who he was. Now listen to this. So Elisha looks at this woman. The woman gives. And he doesn't talk. What, what do you take of a preacher? Who comes to your house ten times. You cook and concern yourself. With a lot of stuff. And then when he's done he says nothing. And he leaves. And he did that for long. Then the woman said, now I perceive. Something has shifted. You can spend time with a man you don't know for a very long time. The servant of Elisha didn't know Elisha. When he saw the army around the city, he ran to Elisha and said, alas, my master, we are finished. That his man of God had to pray for him so that he can know the man of God. Because physically his proximity was okay but spiritually his proximity was wrong you can take pictures with a man who is in nairobi and you are in kitui yet you are in the same picture i don't know if you got what i said physical proximity is not spiritual proximity because when god opened the eyes of the young man elisha was not around him elisha was in the mountain surrounded by chariots of fire the young man said hey Elisha said, that's the man that is with you in the house. So Elisha is in the house, but he's not in the house. He's in the mountain. They surrounded the house, but they didn't surround the mountain. So they had the wrong picture of the man. That's why Elisha just prayed, Lord, give them blindness. And they went blind. And Elisha told them, come, follow me. Let me take you to the man you seek. And took them to the king. The king told Elisha, my father, do I kill them? He said, no, don't kill them. Give them food. They were carrying guns. So if you send your boys to go and arrest a, 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 a gangster, of a prophet, and then ufuatili ukuto wa mewekiwa karamu wanakula, wameheka bunduki kwa mewekiwa, wameheka bunduki kwa mewekiwa, wanararua chakula, hap, wanararua, na wewe ndiyo boss wao, utawangalia, wamekawa wanakula, alafu wakimaliza, Elisha kawambia, nendeni muambia boss wenu, ya kuamba mejaribu the wrong thing, when men know God, they don't talk about God, they demonstrate God, so Elisha said to Gehazi, what shall I do? He didn't say what God will do. The woman was not feeding God. The woman was feeding the prophet. So don't disturb God to come in this matter. Ask the woman, what can I do for her? And Gehazi discussed everything that can be done for her. Something that some weird teachings have been going on. I saw a young man arranging prophecies and I called him and asked him, why are you doing this? And he said, man of God, it is in the Bible. I said, which Bible? He said, Elisha sent Gehazi to get the information from the woman. Then while Elisha was prophesying, he didn't tell the woman that Gehazi told him. I said, go and read your Bible again. Elisha was in that house long enough to know that the woman did not have a son. So that one is wrong. Put an X on it. Don't send anybody to gather information for you. Don't ever try to make God powerful don't do that he is god whether a miracle happens or not he is god preach the word if there's no miracle drop the mic sit down he knows how to confirm his word i don't know if you got i don't know if i've offended you i don't know if i've offended you don't be under pressure to prove anything it is boys that somersault to prove they are strong old men don't somersault you didn't understand what i said okay when God gives you real power, you will take an ear mic and become more relaxed. 
There's a difference between anointing and youth power. They are not the same. Some of you are only youthful. You are not powerful. Okay. You'll get that another time. Now listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. So Elijah says, what shall I do for her? She has been concerned. I want to do something for her. So Gehazi explained everything. Then Elisha looked at the woman and said, Mama, this time next year, you will have a son. And the woman said, Man of God, do not lie. This is a lie. Don't lie to me. It is not possible. When you have God, you don't explain what you have said. Elders don't explain proverbs. He kept quiet. But the woman conceived and brought forth a son. Because when God speaks, it looks like a lie. God is far from the realm of reality. When God blesses you, the church must fight you. Because people you think know God don't know him the way you think they know him. When Jesus came walking on the water, Peter said, he's a ghost. Jesus said, no, it is I. Because when God comes in certain dimension, it looks demonic. Because God is outside this view of beauty that you have. The things God does are strange. And when strange things happen, people speak strange things. Miracles don't happen for you to understand them. No man can understand a miracle. A miracle can't be understood even by the man God is using. After Moses saw wonders in Egypt, the sun turning dark for three days, frogs coming into the palace of Pharaoh, hailstones, firstborns dying in one night, a rod parting the sea, his hand getting into the coat and becoming leprous, and he removes it and it is healed. After Moses saw a rod turning into a snake and he picks it and it is a rod. You would think that Moses knows God. But sometimes that a man has seen so many wonders is not evidence that he knows God. That's why Paul cries out and shouts, Oh, that I may know him. He begins like he knows him and he says we know that all things work together for good for them that love God for them who are called according to his purpose for them uh, that he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that Jesus might be the firstborn among many brethren he says we know in whom we have believed and we know that he is able to take care of that which we have committed uh, to him against that day and you think Paul knows God and then Paul realized the more he knew God the more he didn't know God and towards the end of his life he lets out a battle cry and he says, oh, that I may know him. Because the more you know him, the more you realize you, are no, you have no idea who he is. He will use another man that you look at yourself and say, Lord, is it still you? A man will be preaching and people are sleeping and is crowded 20 times another church. And a man will be preaching deep revelation. Doing all kinds of meetings. Let the Lord come. Let the Lord arise. Let the Lord go. Let the Lord fly. Let the Lord arrive. Let the Lord land. And nothing is changing. Because he's God. And he has dimensions you are yet to catch. Oh Lord. Listen to me. And listen very well. So you would think Moses knows God. Until God tells Moses people have cried because of meat. Tell the congregation to sanctify themselves. For tomorrow they will eat meat. Not for one day, not for two days, not for three days, not for two weeks, not for one month. They will eat meat until meat comes out of their mouth. And Moses quickly tells God, Lord, I have a question. <laughs> I not believe that tomorrow God can feed them. He starts suggesting for God, will you slaughter meat? Will you slaughter fish? The mindset of men who don't know God. That is why the people that fight the supernatural the most are believers. If there are people, bishop, that will fight you tooth and nail in this town, if God will give you a V8, it's okay, it's understandable. But if God gives you a 45 million car in this town, you will lose friends. Because believers talk big, but they believe in small things.
believers preach power until a dead man rises. They say, hmm? we have been telling you. <laughs> we have been telling you. <laughs> this is Kitui. This is Kitui. This is Kitui. We have been preaching here. Are we not preaching here? From where? Hmm, I told you. I told you. It cannot be God. You see, how? 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 Believers are asking questions. So the man of God, Moses, Moses, Musa, but I see if it was not a Musa meona, Musa nangalia mungu na mwambia mungu. Unasema, kama ungesema mwezi moja tungeelewa, tungejipanga. Lakini kesho, how? Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to provide enough for them, or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered that was one finger has my arm then God tells Moses now you shall see whether what I say will happen to you or not let's go to verse 30 let's go to verse 30 and God looks at Moses and says okay because you have mentioned cattle and because you have mentioned fish wonderful cattle is on the land fish is in the sea and since that is all you can perceive i want to introduce you to a dimension moses that you don't know before since your mindset is fixed on the bank kama bank inaweza kuja etukubali ichukue hii project tutakuwa tunalipa pole pole wapendwa praise the lord mungu wetu si anaweza so manager ameongea na bayao. Si hiyo ni Mungu. Hiyo pia ni Mungu sijakata. Lakini hiyo ni dimension ya chini sana. Dimension ya loan iko chini sana. Iko chini sana. God is not a cripple. Yes. God does not need to borrow anybody's money. Amen. God is Now look, at, now look at this and Moses returned to the camp verse number 31 look at this so God tells Moses since your mindset is fish and cattle na kama kuna watu na kuanga na mindset ni wachungaji hata kiubiri amesha ajwa nyanaeza mpatia gari ana ubiri na nangali hapo kuna wengine kuna wengine wana amewainua na macho yake kwa hapo ame pasta ino I've gone through deliverance. I understand. Bishop, one time I lost a man whose tithe is about half a million. And so, <laughs> I will try to restrain some testimonies. So, he came. You know how people behave when they're about to leave church? Because people leave church before they leave. And sometimes they leave for two years before they leave. <laughs> One time I taught on where follow-up ends. Follow-up is powerful, is good in church growth, but you must know where it ends so that you don't make a fool of yourself. Don't bribe someone whose heart has left and his body is remaining. The moment someone says, I want to leave, if you know God, you even give them transport in case they don't have. And you give them police to send them quickly so that they can go very fast so that they don't delay. Now, when you are in this thing for a while, you'll understand what I'm saying. But when you're a child, you think everyone should be one. And everyone must not leave. And you spend sleepless nights over people that left the ministry. The man that began it was left. There is no anointing that can stop people from leaving your ministry. And no matter how good you are, there must be something wrong that will be said about you. It is part of ministry. We know you as a man of God by the level of honor you command and also by the level of dishonor that you command. Ali ambiwa anatumia nguvu za meshetani for the first time si muhubiri ni Yesu. Mtu alimwangalia akitoa pepo. 
Na akisema huyu jamaa anatoa pepo na nguvu kutoka kwa kiongozi wa mapepo anaitwa Beelzebub. So no matter how much you explain the anointing you carry, there are people anointed to misunderstand you. And that is their mission. No anointing can change Judas because Judas is anointed to betray you. No matter how much you fast, as a matter of fact, you have to appoint Judas so that he can deal with you. Judas was not intended to fight you. If you are not called for it, don't try it. It's a danger zone. So God, <laughs> I salute you, sir. <laughs> okay, so God now tells Moses, so I started convincing this half a million tight man. I told him, you know, you cannot live. He's an elderly man. He said, hey, pastor, you know how much I love you. I said, be a fool at the end of the day. When you are going through church breakup, talk about prosperity. Talk about peace. Preach about forgiveness. Preach about Jesus is coming. Don't even go there. Because you don't trust your enemy with your pain. He will destroy you. The number one enemy you have are not people who left. Are people who remained. They know your desperation and they want to capitalize on it so that they can really get close to you so that you can discuss their friend who left. You say, you see like Njeri, I never believed that Njeri and I talk up and I never believed that Njeri and I talk up and I never believed that Njeri and I talk up. You say, you see like Njeri, you never believed that Njeri and I She'll not only report, but I'll talk voice note. I love for Njeri to say, eh, this pastor will know who we are. Now, where people come, Jinga, you trusted Njeri with some things. My friend, you are going to go through a fight that anointing cannot help because you simply didn't have the wisdom to know that when men leave, they leave before they leave. So study those who have left before they leave so that you regulate what you say. A church member is not your friend. No matter what they give you. Anybody you attack, demons that are attacking them, demons will turn them against you. You have no friends, but you are committed to love them. Jesus knew who was going to betray him, but he didn't kill him. In fact, he battered the bread of the betrayer while others ate dry bread so that Satan can enter him quickly. And he didn't pray that betrayal doesn't happen. He said, friend, whatever you do, do it quickly. Because some pains need to come quickly so that you can grow. <laughs> Somebody say, hey! Now, I convinced this old man. I told him I will give one of my Mercedes-Benz cars to drive you from your home to church. I'm making a mistake that should not be made. I said I'll be brief in my preaching so that you don't sit long. Because anybody you beg, they know you've made them a project. They are running away because you've turned them into an idol. And they don't like it. They are tired with you. They are tired of you. Beg no man to stay with you. At the same time, insult no man to leave you. Wisdom in letting, is in letting this thing take its course. The hardest man to fight is a silent man. I've gone through battles, I don't post them. I don't attack my attackers. I don't talk about them. I don't give them reasons to think they are at my level. Sometimes your response prolongs your battle. You are post. The people that first read your posts are people you blocked. Immediately you post the first people that read it are people you blocked. And when you are painting and you are attacking people, they can read it from social media. Your battles will be long. Social media is an altar that you need to learn how to use as a pastor. Don't take your convictions there. Don't market your pain there. Don't tell people who you are. The hardest man to fight is a mysterious man. A man who doesn't confirm. A man who doesn't explain. A man who doesn't tell what has happened. But a man who believes that time is a master that will prove men that were called by God. You can't fight that man. Your response gives raw material to the enemies of your ministry. They tell them how you are thinking. In VIP protection, mental calculation is superior to having a weapon. Actually, they say that being mysterious is better than having 20 bodyguards. If they don't know the car you will use, the president can pass through Kabati and nobody will know. 
So don't make noise about your pain. Yes. In every funeral, killers attend. So be careful how you cry. <laughs> Some didn't come to cry. Yes. Some came to celebrate the pain. Yes. And the people standing while you are attacking those that left church, they are not your members. They are gathering information. Actually, their enemies that you blocked are watching the service through their line. Because a preacher is nobody's friend. The moment your attack is on Satan, you are nobody's friend. After all my effort, <laughs> and you know he's the only one that was coming from the other side of town. You know pastors love taking pictures of the parking. See people who are now attending. See cars. And it is good. And he's the only one who was coming from the other side. And every time I preach, I would say, like Elder Swan so here, where they live. So that the church can feel that pastor is pastoring some really heavy people. <laughs> now one heavy man is leaving. I've done everything and he's going. <laughs> Leave alone him going when you remember half a million. <laughs> and so, the man finally left. And it was two months after he left. I was in a mall with my children late in the night. And I bumped on him. And he said, Pastor, my God, what are you doing here? It is late. When will you get home? And I also told him, oh, you are here. It is late. And we finished the story. What do you want to hear? It was late. Kwalemulisoma literature, you have understood what I said. And when we parted ways, the Lord asked me, if you met him in the mall, if you were still a member, he would think it is because of him that you are now meeting him in the mall. He had to leave for him to know he's not Jehovah Jireh. I am Jehovah Jireh. I am El Shaddai. I am El Gibor. The one that sits on the circumference of the earth and watches over the sons of men as grasshopper. He is my bridge over trouble. He's the shepherd of the sheep. He's the eagle that, I, that, that is Ezekiel so carrying a green leaf. Eagles don't build with green leaves. He's the man that carried the tree all the way to Calvary. I love this man from Galilee because when he wants to change your life, he begins by changing your surrounding and exiting some people so that when he does it, he will remain to be God in your life. There is a car you are about to drive without the bank, without the help of anybody because you have thought it is going to come from the Alimana. It will come from the sea. It will come from the land. But Moses, I came to speak to you. It will not come from the sea. It will not come from the land. I am Jehovah and I want to introduce you to a new realm you've never known before. Please, let's sit down. Let's sit, 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 sit. I am God. So in verse 31, now a wind went out from God so that he can show Moses that everything you are thinking is nothing. What is a wind? Nothing. You know, as men of God, when we preach, we are building it. Your eyes are on some people. So if they are not there the day you are preaching, we are building it. The preaching is not very powerful. One thing God teaches a man he has called is called absolute trust in God. Abraham was a man like you. But one thing about Abraham is how he trusted God. He trusted God that God told him, take your son, your only son. Not your only son whom you love. And I'm going to give you three days so that you can change your mind. And he didn't tell him the specific mountain. He said, take him to one of the mountains of Moriah, which I will show you. Because God tells you, then God will show you. When you obey the generals, he will give you the specific. He said, Samuel, will go to one of the sons of Jesse. He wasn't particular. So that if you obey to go, when you get there, he will now show you the particular one. So take your son whom you love, your only son, 
God is not interested in the flesh of babies. God is interested in the obedience of Abraham. And he wants to know if Abraham really loves him. Because, sir, it is one thing to cry and roll on the floor. Father, we love you. <laughs> and you maskini na kusumbua. Haimanishi unapenda mungu. Kuna watu wengi, ni, ni tabu za uduma, inafanya wakaini kama wanapenda mungu. Lakini hawapendi mungu kabisa. Ni vile hawana kitu ingine ya kufanya. <laughs> Somebody say, hey! So, <laughs> Ha, imanima, paria seli ya mugos. Oh man, oh man, then God comes and tells Abraham, I want to find out if you love me. Abraham said, Papa, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and go offer him as a sacrifice on the mountain of Moriah that I will show you. Abraham did not tell Sarah about it. Abraham, as much as he loved Sarah, he took the boy. And it was a three days journey. And on the third day, he lifted his eyes and he saw the place. Because in your walk with God, there is a place called the place. You will come there. You can run around, but God will bring you there one day. So he saw the place and immediately he saw the place. The boy got concerned. And the boy said, Papa, I see the wood. I see the fire. I see us. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And the father told him, my son, God. He didn't say God will provide. He said God will provide for himself a lamb. For a burnt offering. And so he now leaves the servants behind. And he tells them. You want to know that Abraham trusts God. He tells them remain. With the donkeys. I and the boy. We are going to worship yonder. And we will come back. God said go and kill the boy. But Abraham said, I'm going to kill him and I'm going to come back with him. It is a realm. It's a dimension in the life of a man called by God where you look at the car you drive and you say, Lord, I'm going to give it and I'm going to come back with it. You look at a house and you say, Lord, I spent all my life building this house. But I'm going to give it and I'm going to come back with it. What kind of a dimension is that? How do you kill the boy and come back with the boy? Abraham tells them, when you see me coming back, God said I should kill him. But I'm going to come back with him. He tells the boy that even though it is the last hour now, he undresses the boy. He prepares the altar. He lays the boy on the altar. God is not saying anything. He takes the knife because God had to test his trust to the uttermost. To know if, because God didn't know Abraham. He knew Abraham a bit. It is one thing to know God. It's another thing for God to know you. There are few men that God will say, I have known him. I have known him. Many know God, but few are known of God. In Genesis chapter 18, God talking of Abraham, he says, I have known him. I've known him. God tells the devil, have you seen my servant Job? It was not Job saying, I'm a man of God. It was God saying, this is my servant. In Numbers chapter number 11, ladies and gentlemen, it is God that came to Aaron and Miriam. And said, if there are prophets in the land, I talk to them through visions and dreams. Not so with my servant Moses. There were prophets, but Moses was a servant. Jesus said, the greatest among you must be a servant of all. Because 
even the prophetic office, even being a prophet, being a great man of God, being a prophet, being an archbishop, all those things are inferior to being a servant of God. He said, not so with my servant Moses. In Psalm 89 verse 20, he says, I have found my servant David. David's name did not come before the servant. He was a servant before he was David. Have you considered my servant Job? He was a servant before he was Job. Why were you not afraid to talk against my servant Moses? He was a servant before he was Moses. And what God defends is when a man is a servant. Why were you not afraid? A close to talk against my servant Moses. Listen to me as I drop the mic. Brethren. Abraham raises the knife. And God says, Abraham, Abraham, don't do it. Because now I know that you fear me. You fear me. I didn't want your baby. I wanted to know that you fear me. How does God test whether we fear him or not? It is not by how we cry. It is not by our walking style. That man fears God. Sometimes you fear the givers. It is not God you fear. You fear those who give. <laughs> Sometimes it is poverty you fear. But God said, because Moses did not withhold uh, Abraham his only son. Now I know that you fear me. And I want to do for you something I do for people that fear me. I've known you, Abraham, but I didn't know you in this dimension. I didn't know you in this level. Now I know. And that is what we now read. In blessing. Then the angel of the Lord called him from heaven a second time and this is what the angel of the Lord said. Look at this. Verse number 15, right? Is it? Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven. We go, that we read, and said by myself, I've sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing. What he's now giving Abraham is called an anointing. When you obey God, he doesn't give you money. He gives you an anointing. The radio station you are preaching in Pastor Kavoy called me to his church. They were having a problem with the roof of the church. And he shared with me a lot of things. I have to mention names because we are live, right? Yes, I have to mention names. So that, you know, sometimes I give testimonies that people say, Hey, 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 hey pastors. Hey. I preached. I didn't scream. Then I preached second service. Then I said, I need us to give me for this roof just a little offering of a hundred thousand shillings. And also don't run out. I'm going to take a cup of tea at the lounge there so you can come there. Between 10 10 and 12, two hours. Bishop, we couldn't finish people that want to give a hundred thousand shillings. My team, my team was there, right? My team, my team is here. Oh, you are there with me, right? One lady came and said, Pastor, me, I don't want to give a hundred. I want to give 3.8 million. The man of God was looking at me, he said, what did you tell them? I 
I said, but you were here when I was talking to them. Yes. He said, what is this? He said, I know these people. If I tell them that I'll receive it, they may not bring it. So please, I want you to announce another date to come back so that to ensure that they give it because I, I knew he's here. I told him, Pastor, nobody plays with what is mine. Because I'm in that realm of in blessing. I will bless you. It is an anointing. I've been trusted with an anointing. You see this thing people worship called money. That makes pastors have sleepless nights. It is nothing. I have that anointing. I was preaching in our church last Sunday but one bishop. And I said, when I'm done, I need people who will give me one million shillings. One, one. I'm the senior pastor there. I preach to them. I asked for an offering of one million. I said, I'll be in the lounge there, so please, those of you who want to give it, you come. And we had over five people who want to give one million to God. Apart from others. I was in you know, we believe that Nigerians are the most powerful ministers. I was in Nigeria. I preached. I said, I want to receive an offering of one million. When I'm done, bring it. It took us time to finish the number of people that want to give it. I've spoken to people when they need money. A couple, their house was being auctioned. I said that day, I'm going to be in the office. So everyone that is going to bring me 15 bags of cement for the building, <laughs> Kama will bless you. So they came. I think they borrowed it. And they also hear that sometimes people bring me money and I return it to them. So I think they came with the hope that peradventure, that grace will come for me to return it to them. So they brought 15,000, a man and his wife, and the children could not go to school. They all came. The house is about to be auctioned. The, the way they were crying. When I told them, put the envelope there. And they were looking at the envelope and the way they were crying. It is a cry that you can tell them, please have it, have it. But that day I didn't hear, have it back. So the man, he was expecting prayer. So I told him, please, you are, you're done, you can go. He said, Papa, prayer. I said, there's no prayer. You can just go. He said, Papa, now we should go. They are looking at the envelope on the table. Now, <laughs> Papa, now we should go. I said, you can go. 26 minutes later, insurance had held on to some deal that belonged to this guy for almost eight years. 26 minutes later, the text he got from the bank manager was for him to go there and clarify what had happened to his account so that they can be aware and ensure everything is done correctly. It was some millions. When they ran back to the office, in my office in Rungai, when they ran back and the man was saying, hey, Papa, Papa, hey, the man is crying, the wife is crying. I told him, why? He said, Papa, you have eyes, look. When I saw the message, I got jealous. I said, Lord, this is not fair. I'm the one who prayed the prayer. I took, <laughs> I took my hands. I, I pretended I'm praying for them. I laid them on myself. And I'll say, Likada, Ubrodo, Likada, Likede. I was saying, Lord, Lord, it is me. It is me. Listen. The Lord told me, even you, like any other man, have to do what they do to enjoy what they enjoy. That's how men of God carry graces that don't work for them, but is working for people. Because they forget that when you are a man of God, there is you and there is a man of God. The first man that must honor the grace on you is you. If you don't, people will use that grace and you will remain the way you are.
And then you'll start things like, I have raised people. I have blessed people. Anybody I raise, ni miombea watu hapa, wanapata miujiza, wamenunua mashamba, wamenunua magari, wanaenda. Swala ni, walifanya nini? Na swala ni, kile walifanya, you must do it double. One time I was on the altar. I asked people to give one million shillings to God in our church. And the Lord came to me and said, what are you going to give me? I said, Lord, I'm the man of God. He said, oh, you are the man of God. You have asked them to give one million. Give me ten million. I got home and I became sick. Because when I wiped out all that money, what was left? Ndiyo niligundua kuna wakovu huja uketawa pesa. Ndiyo unajuanga kumbia huko meokoka. Ulikuwa tunamakelele ya pesa ile huko nayo. Some of you are not, don't really love God. You just love the car you are driving. You, it makes you think like you love God. Some of us love ministry and the crowd. And you think you love God. Your love for God will be revealed when God comes for that church. I gave it. A man came to my office as I'm closing. I was on radio as well. He came. When he bowed, I could tell he had, officer, he had two pistols. One here, one here. Do you know what he told me? He said, Pastor, I don't give to pastors. But I heard you on radio and I felt I can give. But I'm just informing you, I don't give to pastors. <laughs> and pastor will be back. If you don't have grace, don't receive some offerings. It is better to tell him the Lord has changed his mind. Just go with it. <laughs> because when a man has two pistols and he tells you that I will come back. He said, and you were saying that and he was crying. He said, what I've gone through in this life, I will come back. But I don't give to pastors. He said, can I write you a check? I was looking at him and moved. I said, you can. He went to the car and brought a checkbook, ACB. He was behaving like he was mad. He arrived. He, he drew the check very quickly. He said, Pastor, can I give it? I said, throw it there. I didn't say put it. I said, throw it there. He said, can I go now? I said, you can go. He drove from Rongai. There's a place called Galeria. I didn't know who he was, but, but from my little knowledge, I could tell who he is. I've never met him all my life. So when he got to Galeria, he got a call to go to one house in Karen. And he got there when the other team they were with, now officer will understand what I'm saying, the other team they work with were just being dispersed. And he came in and the man was going upstairs and the man said, oh you are here, just give me a minute. The man went upstairs and came with the package and threw it at him. And he held it. And he said, God bless you. All oh, the other guys are going. And he, he didn't waste time. He went into the car. He tore it. It was five million Kenyan shillings. The man shouted in the car, hey! Because all his life, the man has been used on serious assignments. Where he is positioned, any, he should not be the way he was. He is positioned where men are rewarded. Well. But something used to happen to this guy that no matter how well people are being rewarded, something will happen, he will not get it. That thing, if he tells you assignments he undertook and the life he was living, you can tell something is wrong with this guy. That was the first time in his life to tear a reward of five million. He called me in the car. He, he had people calling me, Papa. He said, Papa, I said, who is this? He said, I've just left your office. He said, Papa. I said, what is it? He said, Papa, can I come? I said, who are you? He said, I just left your office. I said, yeah, you said you'll come back. C can I come? I said, yes, you can come. He said, Papa, are you in the office? He said so many Papas that they were not making sense. Anything he said, Papa, he thought that is my real name. So he came back. When the people saw him, the people, because I had called my people, I said, this guy, he's not a good man. So when they saw him coming back, and I told them, he said he will come back. They knew the man of God is finished. He came back, he was looking, he forgot to close his car. It is the people that closed it. He came into the office, he dropped all of it down. He said, Papa, I want to pay tithe. How much is tithe? I said, what is tithe? 
He said, I don't know. I just hear people saying something called tithe. I want to pay tithe. I told him, okay, are you born again? He said, Papa, I, I, what is born again? I said, are you saved? He said, no, my mother used to go to church. My father also used to go to church. So somehow, somehow, I said, no, you're not born again. I want to lead you to Christ. He said, Papa, whatever you say. I led him to Christ. I told him the tithe is 500,000. He said, but Papa, I want to give you money. I said, yes, how much do you want to give me? He said, let me divide it. Have this. And this is my tithe. He said, Papa, next Tuesday, will you be in the office again to tell people to come again, to come and give again? Because I want to come again next Tuesday. I told him, no, it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen every day. He thought every Tuesday I sit in the office and when people bring money, those that have not rewarded them. Will... <laughs> now listen. So the man now calls me to his office. I think it was three weeks later he gave me a brand new car. And God began to bless him. Just newly born again. Sir, in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. Because you have done this thing. Because I can separate you from what you like. Because I can stop you from idolizing money. Because money now means nothing to you. I give you an anointing. The man blessed me so much. He did so much in my life. One man. As I groomed him in the Lord. An anointing went to work in his life. Allow me close like this. Men of God, what you need to carry on your life is an anointing. There are different kinds of faith. But this thing that Abraham did, in blessing, I will bless you and in multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. This thing that God is saying is an anointing. It will go beyond you. In other words, did you hear him telling Abraham, and in you all the, all the seed of the earth will be blessed. And you will become a blessing. In other words now, whoever blesses Abraham touches that anointing. Did you hear when Isaac was praying for Jacob, he said, and whoever blesses you, I will bless. And those that curse you, I will curse. Now, that is now the realm of an anointing. I was preaching somewhere, and the whole week is like I was not telling people to give because everybody feels I have the grace. And it's not every day it works. Because it is controlled by God. So four days, and I knew that ministry was in tragedy, I didn't feel like. So the man began coaching me and training me. When we come from the pulpit, he tells me, hey, Apostle, you see that grace? Now, it's Thursday. I said, yes, man of God. Now, it's Friday. Now, I asked him a question, man of God, why... Are you swallowing Panadol for my headache? He said, Apostle, I don't understand. I said, why are you worried? Martha, you worry about many things. One thing is needed, and it is what I'm doing. So up until Friday, I've not done anything. So on Sunday, I'd done preaching. He wasn't happy. Bishop, you know when the host is not happy. You can tell even by how now you are being received to the pulpit. Uh, brethren, he doesn't need any introduction. Man of God, please. You can tell he is tired. <laughs> you have come here, you are a burden. You have not. He hears people say, grace, grace, grace. Where? You are a burden. That night I was just making people laugh. People laughed. And then when I had 15 minutes to close, I said, I'm going to the office. Tomorrow morning I'm leaving. There was a crowd. If you can give one million shillings between now and tomorrow morning, if you can transfer it now, 
do it you can bring it tomorrow bring it perhaps you add it in the car because when you know god this is what you'll know you will know that money that is not in the bank is more than money that is in the bank if you know god in this kitui pesa inyo haiko kwa benki ni nyingi kushinda pesa inyo kwa benki that's why they change currencies at certain times because the money outside that cannot be accounted for is more a man died in this country and he took three days to return all the money that were in his house to central bank how many of you know what i'm saying is true Anybody that knows what I'm saying is true? So, I said it, if you have it in the car, you can also bring it. If you can transfer it, you can. God bless you. I'll be around for only five minutes. I'm tired the whole week. I'm planning to travel tomorrow. Bam! I dropped the mic. People almost broke their legs on the staircase. Three people already did a transfer. There are two men that had it in the car. I don't know how. You know there are things that make you think, Nikama likuja na hawa watu walipanga. Them they came cash. The other three guys transferred. The people bringing money tomorrow. One million. I said if you, if you do RTGS or whatever it is, come with the, uh, with the, with the receipt. We are talking of about close to 30 people. This is not next week. This is not next month. This is not as the year goes. Ukipata 10 urushe, ukipata 20 urushe. Ukipata... It is poor people that wait for contributions. People who know God put God to work. So when I got up the office, and these testimonies can be verified. <laughs> I didn't know when the, the man of God first of all went down on the floor. He said, Jehovah, he was, I don't know what he was telling God, Jehovah, Jehovah. I said, man of God, people have come, rise up. He rose up. He said, Jehovah. He said, sir, now I'm not a post again, sir. Do you want to drink anything, sir? Sir, would you want to... <laughs> he, he was not okay. One of the guys that came said, he didn't only hear to give one million, he had he should buy. There's a car I won't mention the model. He had he should go and get it from the dealers and bring it for the senior pastor. Not that the senior pastor doesn't have a car. The senior pastor has a car. But he knows the senior pastor loves that car. He's going to pick it from the dealers tomorrow. He'll pay for it. And then add his one million and bring it. I pray for all of you that are under the sound of my voice. A wind will come from God. I don't like your amen. I say the wind is about to blow from God. In this kitui, a wind is about to blow from God. I say it again, a wind is about to blow from God. A wind is about to invade your ministry. A wind is about to invade your bank account. A wind is about to invade your projects. You have been building for so many years, but a wind is about to blow. I came to blow the roof of this house, and I came to break the walls, because this is not what God has in his intention. A wind is about to blow from God. Lift up your hands and shout, I catch, I catch, I catch. I catch the wind, I catch the wind, I catch the wind, I catch, I catch, I catch the wind sit down I close now listen what will I say what will I leave out you see that building we are building to up to where it is there is not a single coin that is a bank loan there is no fundraising there is no special day to give Close to 70 million now. We haven't started finishing. To the tune we should. I was in Mombasa preaching. And mama said. Tomorrow we need 1.3 million for the work to continue. Churches were closed. They were allowing around 100 people in church. And not 100. Around 20 something like that. But Mombasa was open. So I went to preach in Mombasa. So mama said, tomorrow we need 1.3 million for the work to continue. If the work, if without that, the work cannot continue. I said, mama, give me a minute. I'll get back to you. Because I'm the husband, mama knows I have the solution. So 
I listened and then I came back. I said, Mama, tell the fundies to report to work tomorrow. He said, has somebody promised you anything? I said, no, just tell the fundies to report to work tomorrow. Why? Because I have done some things. In the atmosphere here, you don't have to pray for money. I have a license to tell money up here to honor you because I've deposited enough here. I don't know if you'll get what I'm saying. It, it sounds like it is not doctrinal what I'm saying. That is why Paul would say, not that I desire the gift, but I desire the fruit that will enter your account. So Paul was not just a man. Paul was a mobile bank account for many people. You touch Paul and money enters your account. Then Paul said this, and my God, but he was, Bishop, he was very conditional on that. Before he said, my God, you need to look at what he said about that church. But that is a by the way. So I told mama, you'll have it. Uh, mama, tell them to come tomorrow. So I switched off my public line, remained with my private line so that I can rest because I knew mama may call and I knew nikiongea ivo, najua atari ya kuongea ivo. So I knew something is going to happen. I don't know, but I know. So, 15 minutes, I saw mama's calls on my private line. -da 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 -da. I picked, I said, mama, what is it? He said, daddy, hey, when your husband calls you, your wife calls you and say, hey, you are a man of God. Brother, God called you. He said, my husband, I said, what? He said, hey, a pastor has come just now. When God wants you to know it is God, he will use a raven. Raven loves meat. So for raven to carry meat without eating it in the morning and deliver it to a man of God, bread and meat, and go back and come back in the evening at the same time, carrying ravens love meat. For raven to carry meat without eating it, then you know it is God. So there are things when God wants to do in your life and you see him using a pastor. A pastor had arrived. He said God spoke to him. He wants to buy land for their church but what they have saved cannot buy the land. And God told him to carry all the money and bring it to me. I wasn't in. So he asked, then I said, okay, no problem, he can deliver it. They took him to took, took mama. So he had an envelope. So when he broke it open, it was one million Kenyan shillings from a pastor. I went back to, to rest. I'm preaching in the evening at JCC. So I went to rest. When I woke up, I saw several missed calls. I called back. I said, my daughter, that my daughter is a police officer. I said, what is it? He said, Papa, there is this money that I took from the bank, from a circle, and uh, I wanted to use it to buy land, but I don't know. I've just lost peace a few minutes ago, and I feel I need to give it to you, Papa. Are you back? I said, no, I'm still in Mombasa. I said, how much is it? She said, 300,000 Kenyan shillings. They needed 1.3 million shillings. My wife is watching. In less than one hour, we had it. Why? Because it is now an anointing. I don't raise money. I raise millionaires. Amen. There's a realm of millions. Pastors, you'll buy a car that your church doesn't know how it was bought. They will see a building going up and you tell the church you are pastoring, it is me and mama building it. The church will say, how? Bishop has joined Luminati. What is happening? That him and mama building it. How? What does it mean? Because God did not limit our money to people we pastor. The same anointing working for people you are pastoring. God wants that anointing to work on you. When they give, you give. When they sow, you sow. Until men see you doing certain things without offerings. One time in our meeting, the tent was packed. And I said, if you have school fees arrears here, step out. And the altar was flooded. 
how much 100000 how much 50000 how much 70 how much 80 how much 20 how much when it was counted it was no small money i said get the details and confirm the schools and the following day by 12 noon all the money was paid in amen and god told me because you have done this you will not be the one to educate your children there are things you do and god delivers you from some things because you have done this this is not an anointing that everybody can just carry like that if you are greedy it will take you to the grave before your time money money anointing money grace why are we calling it uncommon millionaires because it will come to you in a way that is not common there are millionaires that can trace the bank and talk about how they got it but what is going to happen to you you can't explain how pastors utashtuka umebadilisha gari yako na uwezi elewa umenunua ingine uwezi elewa zimekuwa tano uwezi elewa utashtuka unano na prize bus ya kanisa unanunua cash unaleta kanisani na uwezi elewa kile kinaendelea utashtuka umeweka foundation of that modern structure of your own home and you won't you won't tell what is happening to you because when an anointing comes on you you can't explain sir i pray again that a wind will blow in this place i call it the wind of millions i don't like our amen now i call it the wind of millions i call it the wind of millions i call it the wind of millions i call it the wind of sit a close Bishop I was preaching around December in November in a country and when I was done to preach this dear father came to me in the morning He's an elderly man He came to me the envelope was very fat and it was foreign currency I peeped quickly and I saw Ten thousand dollars, and then I told him, "Sir, you've gathered millions of people in a crusade. You have done things I've not done. You've lived years I've not lived. You faced attacks I've not faced. You are older than me by age. You went ahead of me." I'm still praying to see what is already a past testimony in your life. Money is good, but grace is better than money. Yes. Sir, I was shaking as I handed over the envelope. Take the envelope and put it into God's work. And take your hand and put it on my head. I'm willing to travel back home with the laid hands my nasa heavy envelope. because if you choose the hand and leave the envelope you've chosen future plus money amen there are envelopes you collect and you lose your ministry there are people you should not allow so into your life when i went there i'd paid my ticket i was going to pay my hotel every time you see me preaching in mombasa I even told them don't even send my air ticket. Don't pay my hotel. Don't give me anything. What am I looking for? Severally, they have put money in my hands. And I've taken it and put it at the feet of the man of God. And I said money is good. But grace is better than money. I returned that envelope. I got to the airport. I was stressed. I normally don't give this testimony straight. If you follow my videos it is there. I was supposed to go somewhere to pay 1 million 3 times a year. 1 million, 1 million, 1 million. For 5 years. That is 15 million, right? I left the envelope. I got to the airport. A man was calling. A man was calling. I didn't pick. 
I forwarded to the office. The office called and he said, I want to bring Apostle a car and he's behaving like this. Tell him I want to bring him a car. The man told him, sir, calm down. There are others. You are not the only one. The man said, what? So I arrived. I didn't call him. He got offended. He waited. He sent a text. I was told you'll call me. I didn't answer him. After one week, he drove the car by himself. He brought it to, <laughs> to the office and he packed it. He didn't even know I can see him. He said, even if he doesn't see me, here's the key and the documents. Give it to him. Tell him. I've been calling him. He was offended. I've been calling him and he doesn't pick. So I don't want a lot of battles. Take the key. Take the logbook. So they came to me. They said, it was a brand new X-Trail car. They came to me. They said, there's a man here. I said, tell him to come in with his wife. They came in. I told him, God bless you. He thought I was going to pray for him. I went and saw the car. I never entered it. I never drove it. I called my driver and another team. I drove in my car. And I went to a man of God who is now 90 something now. He'd never driven a car all his life. And I gave him the logbook and the car. That became his first car. His tears fell. Because somebody gave him a car, a politician, and took it back. And such an old man, the things he said, I don't want to say them. I gave him the car. It was on social media. I gave him the car. I came back. I had that voice again. Because you have done this. So I went to the place where I was to pay one million, one million, one million. I got there. The secretary said, oh, man of God, you're here? I said, yes. He said, oh, I didn't know you were also here. I said, I'm here. He said, ah, but there is blah, 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 blah that was to happen, but it has already happened to four people. I said, I'm not here for that. I'm here to pay. He said, give me a minute. I call the owner of the place. She called. The man said, I'm in thicker. The man said, but can he wait? I told her, I cannot wait. I didn't come for any help. I came to pay. I told him, if he comes, call me. I left. The man came. The man came. I sat. The man said, I normally don't do this. But I feel like I'm about to do something stupid. I don't know. Am I okay? He called the secretary again. Do you think I'm okay? We don't do this, but I feel like I, I can't leave this man like this. He was shouting. I told him, sir, calm down. Stop shouting. He said, it is what I'm feeling. He said, okay, don't pay one million. You'll pay 200,000. So instead of one million, two hundred thousand. Instead of one million, two hundred thousand. Instead of one million, two hundred thousand. Instead of three million, pay six hundred thousand. Instead of fifteen million, I paid three million. Because when I had the opportunity to grab ten thousand dollars, I returned it. When it is an opportunity for me to pay, God pays. It becomes an anointing. There are some of you in mortgages now. Something is going to happen to your life in this live broadcast, in this service. You will not explain it. There are some of you trying to buy a land. Something is going to happen that you will not explain. There are some of you trying to buy a church plot. Something is about to happen. You will not explain it. Somebody shout, uncommon millionaire. It is uncommon because when 12 million is paid without you paying it, it is uncommon. It is not normal. It's uncommon. My own life, my own life, sir, my own life, a close like this, when the church was young, we couldn't barely take money from the church. I would go around traveling to preach. Whatever offering they gave me, I came and grew the church with it. Because they were too young, they were too few. I couldn't put pressure on them. Then after some time, I've had experiences like this. After some time, I noticed that on a particular date of the month, when they count offerings of 20, 30 people, there is a bundle of brand new 100,000 notes in the offering. So I asked them who gave it. They said, sir, we collected offerings. Somebody gave it. So the next time I said, I want to find out among these my members, because I know them. Who is it that is giving this? So I said, today we are going to drop our offerings. It was that date. And I want to bless people. God knew my mind. I didn't want to bless people. I wanted to see who gives it. That, it didn't come. So I said, but this is the date. 
So they went to count. When they brought the accounts, it was plus their 100,000. I asked them, how did somebody give you when you are going to count? They said, no, this is what we collected, the basket that we were given. I said, what is it? I waited the third time. I said, now, today, I'm going to join the team counting. Since I couldn't see it from the altar, so it is the date. So I told them, you are going to count while the man of God is watching. So they poured down everything. The 100,000 was not there. I, wait, I watched keenly. When they gave reports, it was plus that money. I asked God, then this is what the Lord told me. What is your problem? I'll never forget it. What is your problem? This thing happened to Mama Teresia Wairimu for some time. This is what happened to Margaret Wangare in the forest when the Range Rover ran out of fuel. And she told the driver, you will see what you must not tell any man. And she stretched her hand towards heaven. And the fuel gauge came from heaven and entered the car. And the driver watched the fuel gauge moving till the Range Rover was full. And the thing went back. You are called by God. Stop behaving like a man called you. You are a servant of God. Don't let the world kill your faith in the miracle working ability of God. You will see it today in this house. You will see it in your ministry. You will see it in whatever you do. You will see it in your house. You will see it. Sit down. Allow me to close. Sir. Moses. Tomorrow. A wind. Will come. This is a dimension of ministry. That the world wants to criticize. And keep us in bondage. And a man wants to preach and say there is nothing like miracle money. You want money? Work. You want money? Work. If you hear miracle money, it is fraud. Sir, it has happened to me. John said the things we heard that we saw, we declare to you. It has happened to me. A couple in our church, the man was surviving cancer. They call me and the woman says, all our cards are exhausted. NHIF cannot do anything now, Papa. He's supposed to be transferred from Nairobi Hospital to a hospital in Parklands. We are having a bill here to pay, but everything is flat. The woman went to the ATM and withdrew the last bit that was there. I saw in my phone about 14,000. I called her back and said, you are in problems. I know what my son is going through. Why are you doing this? And while I was talking, that thing came upon me. I said, okay. I asked her, do you have a dollar account? He said, eh, Papa, we do. But it is some time now he hasn't transacted on it. Because the man used to travel to Congo. He was working with an NGO. He would travel, so he had a dollar account as well. And they had used what was in the dollar account. I asked her, ah, please, you have a dollar account? He said, yes, Papa, but I don't think. I said, don't say you don't think. I didn't know, but I asked you after receiving that offering. Now listen, the lady, I told her, quickly, leave the hospital. Go find any ATM around. There are ATMs in the hospital. So she left and had to go to Harlingham. You know where Nairobi Hospital is? She had to go to Harlingham to find the kind of an ATM that can serve the purpose. She got the card of the man and slotted in. <laughs> Few hours to that time, this money he hadn't been paid on some mission, some work he had done. They had paid in close to $20,000. The woman screamed in the ATM. I said, hey, hey, hey. As I could hear the scream. She went back to the hospital. He said, Papa, what is this? I said, what is it? Did you call them to pay into the account? I said, what do you mean? Call who? Because Papa, we can tell the time. He, he, she took it to the husband. A man who was really, you know cancer, how cancer will deal with. A man who was really weak. The man woke up from the bed. That is when I knew that money works miracles. The man, the man was, when he heard that they had paid in over $20,000. The man woke up, he woke up from the bed. He told, he came down. The wife said, no, don't. He, he came down. He said, give me a phone. I want to talk to Papa. He said, Papa, I'm, I'm fine. I'm okay. I wish I would mention names. You know, he refused. They should not take him to the other hospital. He said, I want to go to my house. 
they took him to the house. I went to see him a day later in the afternoon with my wife. We went there. I could tell he's weak. When the man saw me, he stood up to prove his healing. He said, Papa, <laughs> me, I will serve God with all my life. I will serve God with all my life. Now wait. The man got well for about six months, got back perfectly well, would wear his suit. His flesh came back well. He was coming to church. I was looking at them, sitting where they sit, serving God. I was asking God, what is this? I know, because I don't heal people, but he still left to go home to be with the Lord. But those six months, I asked God so many questions. That miracle made that man at the point where everything does not make sense. He would later tell me that, Papa, my wife gave you wrong information. There's no money I had worked for, I had worked for anywhere that was to be credited to my account. What she's saying was credited two hours before. We've gone even to the bank. There's nothing like that. As a matter of fact, the bank is thinking something is wrong with us. How do we deposit money and then we go and tell them that some people deposited the money? Because the system can no longer show the organization that deposited the money. So the bank claims it must be our money. Maybe we forgot about and they recycled back into the system. Because you can't explain a miracle. When they give in that disparate moment, what happens is this. Elijah prayed to die. He told God it is enough. Take my life. And he slept. That is the day God did not answer a prayer. Because his prayer was that he may die. Samson said let me die. He died. David said, I shall not die. Because he knew if I say I shall die, he will die. Elijah said, kill me. God did not kill him. An angel woke him up. When he woke up, cake that was producing smoke in the wilderness where there is no bakery and there is no one that can bake it. Angels baked a cake and the angel told him, eat and drink for the journey is long. So spiritual cakes can be eaten. And he ate it and drank. And he went in the strength of that food for 40 days. If God can bake cakes in the wilderness. And somebody tells you there is nothing like miracle money. If Jesus told Peter to go to the sea. And throw in the hook and catch the first fish. And open the mouth and bring out a piece of a coin. To go and pay for the attacks. You are a man of God. You are, not a, you are not a servant of a man. It is God that called you. You are an uncommon millionaire. When you leave this place, say bye-bye to every bill that has given you sleepless nights. You are buying that land. You are buying that land. You are finishing that facility. You are paying off that car. God will brag through your life in this town. And God will use you to show men that you are a servant of God. You are not serving a man. You are serving God. God. The wind is coming from God. Now listen to me. When the wind came from God, what did the wind carry? The wind went to the sea and carried quails. Now listen. Quails don't live in the sea. But that's the first time that quails came from the sea. Because a wind came from God. Yes. Something will happen. I didn't call myself to this crusade. God sent me to come and do this crusade. And one thing I know that is going to happen. God is causing an economic revival in churches that are here, in industries that are here, in businesses that are here, in schools that are here. When I leave Kabati, there are ministers of God seated here. There are some watching online that are going to give testimonies that look like what I'm saying now. You will shout, it has happened to me. 
you will shout it has happened to me you will shout man of god it has happened to us you will wake up in the morning and find a building built. We have not seen miracles until you wake up and find a house you laid the foundation has been built to the Linton. You have not seen God until you wake up and you find your ministry roofed and you can't tell who roofed it. You have not seen God until you wake up in the morning and you find a husband dressed with a tie standing beside your bed telling you, honey, I'm going to work. And you wake up... Who are you? And he says, I'm your husband. How do you believe the Bible and be a common millionaire? Adam went to bed and slept. And when he woke up, God brought him a fully grown wife. And Adam looked at the wife and said, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh i shall call her woman and he went into his wife he didn't question a lot of things and the wife became pregnant jacob worked for 12 years for 14 years and paid dowry no whatsapp group adam woke up and found his wife. I want you to imagine a sister here going to the washroom and coming back shouting, it has happened, it has happened, it has happened, praise the Lord. And the pastor say, yes, yeah, sister, come down, give us the testimony. And the sister say, praise the Lord, the church, hallelujah. Hey, brothers, you cannot believe it. I went to the toilet. Tell us. <laughs> Jehovah, you see, this brother you are seeing standing beside me and the whole church doesn't know the brother. The pastor has never seen the brother. Nobody knows him, knows him in Kabati. He's never been seen in Kitui. You can't tell where his mother is from and his father is from. And he says, when I immediately I was done, the Lord told me, behold my daughter, here is your husband. And brethren, here he is, the man after my dream. The pastor will close the church or the pastor will excommunicate them. Because we are believers that don't believe in the supernatural. We are saved. But we only believe God for small things. When it is a hundred thousand, we believe God can do it. When it is fifty thousand, we believe God can do it. But I came for a man and a woman in this congregation that is willing to be crazy, that is willing to tell the devil that I believe believe in the God of the Bible that I'm getting ready now and not only getting ready I step into the realm of being a millionaire that is uncommon I prophesy over your life money is a spirit I break the dimension I break realms for millions I break realms for more than enough I break realms I break dimensions Sanama Kaparata Limanda lift up your hands I shout my millions say it again my millions say it again my millions they are here now. Say it again. My millions. They are here now. Now, now, now. Because money. Is a spirit. Money. Is an anointing. Isaiah 45. Let's remain standing. One time I brought a meeting to Kitui. Men of God that are here, your members are not poor. They are not. You don't know them. The kind of money that is in your ministry, you don't know. God has brought me to a realm where I believe nobody's poor. No. They just need grace. Do you remember the testimony of your brother in Bungoma? Still remember his testimony? A man who wanted to kill himself and leave ministry. Complaining about a church that he wants to throw away. He's tired. Then God began taking me to him in the mountain. Akienda kufunga, nakuja kwa maombi. 
he had never met me akafunga safari akaja nairobi the first time he stayed three days he could not see me he went back he came back again i looked at him kneeling on the altar he dropped his ipad no a tablet a phone and some money he had then there were three pastors then god told me pay their air tickets it was not an air ticket god told me change their levels a church he wanted to throw when he landed in kisumu the church had come in their numbers to receive him with cars they drove him to where he does ministry i think two weeks later they bought him a car he started has somebody ever given you something and you looked at him again he was preaching but he was not preaching he was looking at the church and he was asking where were these people all this while what is happening because an anointing he was preaching to them in his anointing bishop a man of god came to see me and he was very arrogant when the man lays hands skin diseases fall off physically i've never seen that kind of healing anointing anybody he prays for that has cancer dead the cancer dead and then this is what happens after he prays for them they block his number and they block him on social media and they become angry against him if they see he's called they can even call police <laughs> this thing happened to this man of god for some time he was crying when one man of god told him sir there's a service in Ongata Rongai called communion and warfare service. Go, I know you are a man of God. Go down to Rongai and a man will help you. He came the first time. The way God, he, he sent me videos, I still have them, of how God uses him. So he expected me to be very afraid by the time he arrives. I never answered him. He wrote me, man of God, I'm now coming. I didn't answer. He arrived, he said, what kind of a man is this? He refused to come into the service. He sat in his car. When I was driving in, I could tell this is a man of God. So he came out of the car quickly because the man that advised him told him, just go into the service. He refused. I preached. I finished. I got to the office. I didn't see him. I drove off. The man got mad. He called the man who referred him. He said, Ikae, kwani yeye peke? Ikae. Hata mimi ni mtumishi wa Mungu. Na huyo jamaa kamwambia, usilete masharti yako kwa neema ingine. <laughs> Did you know that Naaman was a man of God? Because through him the Lord had brought victories. So God was using Naaman. And the problem with the people that God use is that they suggest for you how to minister to them. That's why he knew Elisha should come out and lay hands. And Elisha said, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> so the man got angry. He went around. In fact, during that time, somebody who promised him a car withdrew it. That is what now brought him back. <laughs> he called that guy. The guy said, I said you should go and be helped. He said, but the man is too proud. He said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. So he carried, he carried, I think that was about 200,000, if I'm not wrong. He came. This time, he didn't wait for anybody to tell him to enter the service. He entered the service. While I was preaching, he was seated at the back. He would remove the envelope. He wanted me to see how far the envelope. He would remove the envelope. I say, when we are praying, I knew this is the man. He would, he would. <laughs> so when the service was over that day, he didn't even want to be brought. He strategically stood where I'm going to pass. A great man. But he ensured I'm seeing the envelope. So I passed and entered the office. So one of my aides told him, today is like he will see you. Because he was totally down to earth now. The moment my office opened, the man came in on his knees. I told him, stand up, man of God. Stand up, stand up. He, he, the seed was in front of him. I said, put it on the table. And this is what I told him. It shall be well. His next birthday, the church bought him two cars. One of the members who was fighting him, 
relocated the office from the wrong side of town, spent close to three million to renovate and buy his office accessories and everything. A family in Mombasa he prayed for and cancer died that had blocked him and blocked him and they gave him a red Mercedes Benz car. The man, every month, the man commits. I'm not his spiritual father. He's a man of God in his own right. This is what he told me. Sir, I have suffered. I did not know ministry can be sweet. Mungu akikuonyesha utajiri iliyozikwa kwa huduma yako. And why people see you and they don't see you. If God will show you why people are about to bless you and they change. Why some people before they just became great they left the ministry. And the ministry where they went they did twice what they were to do for you. You would think it is kingdom. No, it is not kingdom. You need an anointing. You need grace. Nobody promises me anything and changes. It cannot be well. If you promise me anything, I don't have to follow it. It will come. I pray under this atmosphere, the kind of millionaires that God has raised here and on social media, they are uncommon millionaires. I say it again, uncommon millions have come to you. Allow me to pray one prayer with you. And this is the prayer so that I can leave you. Say with me in the name of Jesus. Men of God, say it again in the name of Jesus. On social media, say it in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that hinders millions, that hinders abundance, that hinders greatness in my life and my ministry, today it is dead. It is dead. It is dead. It is dead. Clap your hands and let's pray that prayer. It is dead. It is dead. In Jesus' name. Now, we'll, we read this while we are standing. That says the Lord of to his anointed. To Cyrus whose right hand I have held. To subdue nations before him. And lose the armor of kings. To open before him double doors. So listen. Nations are subdued by anointing. You know what the armor of kings are? The armor of kings. Officer. Armor is what protects an officer. So God said, if he wants to make an officer armorless, he takes the pistol and everything else. So anointing makes an armed man armless. That is how someone will take his Mercedes keys and give you. That is how someone will take a hundred acres of land and give you. He has no defense. Anointing destroys the thing that protects wealth. It breaks the spirit of stinginess. Anointing makes what men used to protect themselves. They don't understand how they let it go. That's how you can say one million and people run. Why? They are defense. You are not manipulating them. You carry grace that breaks the defense of men. Nobody can tell you I'm going to buy you this and change. Because of anointing. Look at this. To subdue nations before him and lose the armor of kings. It is anointing that opens double doors. It is anointing that ensures gates are not shut. Look at verse 3. Then look at what anointing does. I will give you the treasures of darkness. And riches that are hidden in secret places. So there are riches. The reason they have not come to you, they are hidden. There are people that follow you that are covered and hidden. You don't even know what they have. And they cannot tell you. It is after this meeting, Utashtuka. Mutu wakikuambia kwamba, Daddy, by the way, 15 buildings from this place, sime kuanga yangu. Unatoa miwane. What? It was hidden. They are helpers in your life, in your ministry. Who can give you a hundred million now? But they are hidden. And they are enjoying it. They also don't pay tithe. They don't want you to know. Because they are hidden. There is an anointing. One man. Now a ministry. That was frustrating a pastor. Buying two new cars. It means men that were hidden there. Came out. 
when someone who was fighting you spends three million to furnish your office what happened his armor was broken there are people in your life in your ministry around you that one man can change your life but they are hidden you will never even know some of the richest people around you you will never know them because they are hidden and they are covered i'll give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that i the lord who call you by your name one way there's a dimension of knowing god that moses didn't know god like that is when god brought wind and wind brought quills musa hapo anajua hiyo mungu akamwambia hii hujaelewa na kuna kiwango ya kujua mungu ya material things that god is causing in this house utashika kifungo ya gari yako na ukipiga start utaizunguka kwanza na useme ni mimi kweli in kitui bila loan bila deni imetoka wapi hii na uache hiyo na uwashe ya pili na uizunguke pia because all of them are beasts na uzunguke na useme ni mimi kweli in kitui in this ministry na uende kwa ya tatu if you have a plan to build a house don't build a small parking my friend because god is not small at least 8 to 12 cars should be fit in your parking because we are not going to heaven with these things and there is an anointing for wealth you will turn Kitui into a tourism center men will travel to come and see what God can do Manakata. Lord release the uncommon grace the uncommon millionaire's grace there are projects in this house that need uncommon millions there are things in this house that need uncommon millions there are projects with men of God in this house that need uncommon millions this is the last time I preach in this structure and I preach on this altar. Open the heavens for uncommon millions. For uncommon millions. For uncommon millions. For uncommon uncommon millionaires. This is the instruction. I should go home but I will go home after agreeing with men and women that God sent me for here. You see this crusade coming. I want to pray for some of you. I don't know how you are going to get it. But my God is going to give it to you. There are some of you that are going to give into that crusade. This is your land. Huku ni kweni. Na naomba hivi. Kuna wengine hapa utatolea Mungu 1100 tu na 50. It's not much. You shouldn't struggle with such an offering. Just 150,000. Some are online. There are some of us here that can give God 100,000 for this meeting. I'm coming in here with a big team. We want to make it look like it is not Kabati. We can't allow strangers come from other nations to come and do big things. When they go, they go back with that grace. When will a man in Kitui, from Kitui, park a stadium and do great things? We travel to go and see wonders in other countries. John the Baptist went to the wilderness and 5,000 men followed him. The problem with Kenya is that if it is local hours, it is demonic. If it is foreign, it is anointed. The man God will use are these men you are seeing. Niwewe tuna mimi. You want to give into this crusade. All I will do, as I always do when I drop this mic, 
I will go back to the hotel. Apostle will bring you there. He will be there. It's an open thing. I'm not going to give you water. I don't have oil to give you. I'm going to hold your hand and tell God, give me a millionaire in this man. Raise him for the kingdom. God is rich. Even if we don't give it, the crusade will still be done. But I want you to partake. Nitafurai ni kisikiza washuda zako za pesa. I'll be happy when you tell me that this Sunday watu watatu wamekuletea 1 million each. I preached somewhere and a caretaker Somebody say caretaker <laughs> went and brought money. <laughs> Pastor asked him, I preached here last Sunday. Where did you get this money from? He said, it is mine. <laughs> then Pastor asked him, and you collect 50 shillings from us every day for food. He said, Pastor, it's because I've never had God telling me to give it to you. But when he began preaching, morning service, I started hearing, give it. I pray. This is the obedience that I'm calling you to. It is not by force. It is not psyched. It is not a must. But if you know what grace is, and you can sense grace, some are online. We are not going to call a politician that eh hey, crusade na kuja kabati tukitembea ku ofisi ya politicians ati governor tupatie kitu. Ah! How? A time is going to come when a governor is running for an election. God will raise churches in this town that will call the governor and say, "Bwana governor, we wanted to help you 3 million for campaigns. Please take it." When the church will begin to give to these politicians, they'll fear the church. What do you think will happen when the president comes to your church and you say, His Excellency, thank you for visiting us. We have something for you for fuel. And give him two million. Bila kumuambia, kuna hii shamba, mweshimiwa rais, mweshimiwa rais, kuna hii shamba hapa. Are you seeing the dynamics? Open your hands, let me pray. You want to sacrifice? I've done my part. Allow me to pray. Father, you have stretched me like this and you have trusted me with grace. These are your servants. Some are business people. Some are men and women who gather today. Some are listening. I cannot make you God. You are God. Take this grace and this anointing and let a man and a woman in this congregation testify. You are a builder of homes. Except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that build it. You are a builder. There are foundations here that died. There are ministries here that don't know what happened. Father, we choose to honor you with our sacrifices, with our seeds. We give to us this crusade. And while this crusade will be happening, there's a man here that in two weeks' time will park his car in that crusade and will look back and say, Man of God, the car came when we were giving for the crusade. A house has been stagnant here for years. Built halfway. In two weeks, give me a testimony. Help us that have changed their minds. Help us that no longer honor grace and anointing. Father, for those you appointed and ordained to obey, 
let this anointing be made available for them i pray for every soul every life every man every woman that is represented here and that is following us online bless them let the enemy not steal this truth bless us and glorify your name in jesus mighty name and everyone said amen Let's celebrate the grace upon our, our Father. I say let's celebrate the man of God in the name of Jesus. You may be seated for a while. I know you are being blessed. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, Papa, for hearing God for us. We thank God. Nataka ni lete tangaso moja, then... We call it a day.